I think I'm gonna change some light bulbs. Talk about the most boring introduction ever. It is so gloomy outside, and it has been for a while. Sucking the energy right out of me. I am so tired. I just keep yawning, like nonstop, just yawning. One of the things I need to do, though, is I do need to start changing out light bulbs. Now, typically, hold on. May as well come up here so we can see the light bulbs I'm talking about. Okay, where are here? Hi, here they are. Okay, so there's a lot of dead bugs in there. Gross. 105 watts. Okay, so I actually thought these were 85 watt bulbs. So this just is going to move my point a little bit further. These are actually photography light bulbs. And they have a really good spectrum on them. I mean, it's only 5500K, which is lower than I would typically want for growing plants. But uh, they've worked really well for what they are. The thing is, since they're fluorescent, they have to be changed out very often. Like, really often. Every 10 months. And they're about, I, uh, I want to say, $15 to $25 a piece. I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. There are other things I can use them for. As they age, their spectrum just kind of weakens and dims a little bit. Moving into more of a reddish hue, which would be fine for maybe blooming and whatnot. But these bulbs being all the way up in the ceiling, they're not doing a ton for the plants anyways because your lights actually do need to be a certain distance from your plants for them to get uh, the benefit that... What am I trying to say? The benefit of the light, really. Yeah, but I'm unscrewing light bulbs. I'm going to switch over to LED. That's, that's how fun this story is. Now, LEDs have come a long way. I have these Sylvania LEDs here, nice Cree LEDs. Cree is the type of lens, or it's really the type of LED with the lens on it. They have a higher par. Par meaning how far does the light penetrate? How strong is the light, you know, every few inches to feet? You want high par. These are 38 par. That's really good. So these are 26 watts. And I have an adapter here that holds four. So with this adapter, I can put four 26 watt bulbs on here, which is going to be, what, uh, 104 watts of electricity? Right? That's 26 times four. Yeah, I think. 26 times two is 50. Two, so 52. Yeah, 104. Math. And these bulbs, 105 watts each. So that's 210 watts. So this is half. It's half of that. That's fantastic. I'm trying to cut costs. Really, I'm actually trying to free up electricity for more heaters and other things, but still kind of the same thing. And these bulbs are rated as 150 watt equivalents. Whenever LEDs get into equivalencies, I get very skeptical because without par meters, I'm kind of like, eh, I, that might just be BS. But I've used these for a lot of different things, and they are very, very, very bright. So half the wattage and should be much brighter. But I don't know. I have to turn them on to find out. I don't know. That looks pretty bright to me. Is it more bright? Nah, I don't know about that. These are also floodlights, so they're specific. They're spotted. Spotted? Spot, spotlights. So they're not, like, lighting up the area as dramatically. That's okay. I don't really need them to. Definitely much brighter on the Vandas, which is good, so they're getting lit from both sides. I can't really pull them up any higher, so I can't do much about that, but they should be fine. They've been fine without those in the past, so that should only help things. Okay, that's enough light bulb talk. We just let you know why I'm changing things out, trying to save some electricity, really trying to free up some electricity for some other things. Uh, because between this light one, I said I was done. I'm almost done. So between this one and there's actually another one over there, which you can't really see, but that's going to be 210 watts electricity saved, which is awesome because during the winter time. There's not enough electricity out here, and um, you have to make sure you flip the lights off anytime you open or close the garage doors or else the breaker trips. And that's problematic for a few different reasons. One, because, well, it's just using a lot of electricity. Two, I don't really like the breaker to be that overloaded. It's not really safe, but that's the point of them tripping, I suppose. And, uh, like I said, freeing up some electricity. So right now, I uh, actually I'm done soaking the van. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and I need to run to the hardware store of course because that's what I do here. I'm just always at the hardware store because since it's so gloomy outside I had planned on digging things and repotting them and it's 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 too gross out. I don't want to do it. It's wet. I'm, it's cold. I, I'm not in the mood. So I'm going to work in here and something I've wanted to do for a really long time. I may or may not be able to pull this off in this video or period. I don't know but I've wanted to run a tube up to the ceiling 
and uh, hook up misters. I want to have them hanging low enough so that they're not misting into the crowns of the palms. There will be adenidia palms right here. Uh, but I want it to be located. I'm going to have to play with it so that the water mists down and mostly recollects back into the pond. The reason I want to do that is because humidity is always kind of a struggle out here. So I can set it up, get some valves, some timers, and I, so I can switch it on to run for a certain amount of time every day. And having that vapor, that mist, it's not vapor, mist moving through the air will help increase the humidity in here and just make things a lot easier as far as the orchids are concerned. All the other plants don't really seem to care, although the heliconias appreciate some humidity too. Uh, but the, it's mainly the vandas because keeping these guys hydrated during the winter time is a chore. And that's because the air is so dry. Winter time here, the air is very, very bone dry. Summer, pretty humid. The summer, not as humid as some others. But, you know, in the summertime, I can water them heavily in the morning. And those roots will stay green for a few hours afterwards. In the wintertime, I'm soaking these guys right now. They're having, I think, about 25, 35 minutes soak today. I lost track of time, to be honest. But it hasn't been more than 35 or 40 minutes, I don't think. And those roots, they're green right now. I'll pull them up. I give it 30 minutes. I mean, I won't be here to prove it, but 30 minutes, they'll be white and dry again. And that's not great. The longer you can keep them green, the better. So that's that's what all that's about. Cannot believe these Vandas. You know, when these are full of water, they're very heavy. Like, to the point where I might need to set up a second pulley because it's getting kind of hard to lift them in and out of the water. Would you let go, please? Also, I am slightly concerned about the sturgeon when it comes to the Vandas because they're kind of dumb. Like, I love them. They're awesome fish, but they're just, they're a little, I'm just going to say primitive, very reptilian almost. And like, they're smart, but stupid at the same time. And I just, I have a feeling I'm going to have to untangle them from these roots every time I lift these Vandas in and out of the water. I'll wait until I have to worry about that to see if there's something I need to do about it, but it is something I've been thinking about. Oh, looks like the brass avola fell in there. That's no good. Let's see if I can get that out. Is this, that's, that probably doesn't look great, does it? I don't know. I can't see what's happening. Brass avola looks good, though. It's taken onto this mount fairly well. This thing is also very heavy, but it wasn't even on here when I was pulling it up, so that's not... That's not what the problem was. Alright, I'm gonna flip the lights on, because the Vandas need that light now that they've been soaking. Walk through my aisle of orchids and see if the breaker trips when I put the door down. Wonder how much water got in the car. I've had my windows cracked, because I de- Oh, why are you locked? There we go. Ugh, I detailed this thing the other day, like, super extreme detailed it. It's something I like to do after I do a lot of mulching. It's one of the reasons I want to go buy all my mulch the other day, last week's vlog actually, because uh, I wanted to go ahead and get the car cleaned up. And before wintertime comes around, I like to clean the carpets and scotch guard them. And it's just, it's just habit. It's just what I like to do. But the cleaner, the leather cleaner, oh my gosh, the fumes. Like, I can barely breathe in here. It's terrible. All right, let's see if that goes down. So far, so good. Okay, I think that worked from what I can tell. Let's go to the hardware store. What is witch's brew? I don't know about that. Starbucks trying to put the devil in me? I don't think so, not today, Satan. That barista was extremely flirtatious to a point where I was confused and it was awkward. And he asked me to a Halloween party tomorrow night, which I had to say no to because uh, I have family in town and I also don't know him, stranger danger. But I don't, wasn't expecting all of that. I'm open to it though. Exchange numbers, see what happens. Oh no, my keys fell all the way into the crack. I just, I for, looks like I missed a spot. Got him. You know, anyone who actually asks somebody out to their face always earns some extra points with me. Just wasn't expecting it. I just wanted my coffee. And I'm like not looking good today either. I'm wearing a hoodie and just my hair's a mess. It's always nice when someone asks you out when you don't look good because you're like, hey, we're starting with um, some pretty low standards here. I can work with that. Low expectations, not low standards. Not low standards, not good. I guess low expectations aren't good either. It's good to have high hopes. Just mean, you know, you, you know what I mean. Ugh. <sighs> I forgot to bring my tubing with me. Uh, I don't know what to do now. Oh, you know what? I could probably pull it up on my Amazon purchase, see what size I need. Okay, I think I have everything I need here, except I need two more 
these half inch adapters. I know there's a lot going on in here. My mind is like so scrambled right now. You ever notice how funny the names are on some of the plumbing accessories? I mean, they're probably not funny if you actually know what the things mean, but I mean, some of them are just. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> what? Why? Home. I took a longer route than normal route and uh, to air the car out, I had the windows down and it's very cold. I'm pretty sure everybody I passed probably thought that I was like really gassy and stinky. Because who on earth rolls their all their windows down when it's 47 degrees outside? But it's just the fumes are so strong. The door's still going up? All right, that's a good sign. Oh my goodness. Why won't my my hatch won't my, it won't go up what's going on here what's going on go up well that's not good i can still get in here there's my stuff some halloween candy back here so i need to bring in why am i vlogging this there's nothing interesting happening right now oh i got a tv mount it was on clearance for 30 bucks i've been looking for one for a long time but they're so overpriced and i'm still rambling this thing so annoying. I mean, it serves its purpose, but oh my gosh, it never stops screaming. All right, so here's what I've got going. Something I've been trying to work out for a while. It's not that complicated. I don't know why it, it took me so long, but it's done, kind of. At least I've started it. So I have two different ball valves here. Both are threaded to one inch ID. That's inner diameter tubing. I mean, they're threaded for it. Not, I don't, that's not hooked up to the tubing, obviously, but I have I have two different waterfall filters, so with these I'll be able to shut the pump off before I unplug it. Doing this is going to keep the water from backflowing and siphoning out, because the problem is when I clean those waterfall filters, I turn that pump off to clean it, and when I do that, the water backflows from the filter back into the water, and it's just, it just really still like gunk back in that I've been trying to filter out. So this is going to prevent that from happening, which is nice. Over here, this is going to be for the irrigation. So uh, I'm going to have two separate irrigation lines run, but it's all going to be off the same pump. So I'm going to have my main one-inch line. This is what I use when I use the hose to actually water the plants. Pumps out of here, going to go through here. Now for drippers, I want to hook drippers up to this, but that runs off of half-inch tubing. I could get bigger tubing, but then it just would have thrown everything off with all my emitters. So I just decided I'm going to kind of keep my fingers crossed and hope that there's enough pressure to uh, run through half-inch tubing. I may have to change it up. I don't know for sure. I won't know until I try it. By doing this, I can turn this valve, which is going to put the pressure this way, making sure this one's open. It'll come through here. I have some elbows because that drip line, you know, it's not very flexible. And what that's going to do is it's going to run up to a tube up here in the ceiling to several misters. They're going to have to be hung fairly low because I'm going to be able to reach them and service them in case they get clogged up. I tried to find a backflow preventer. Backflow preventers, they kind of catch like the grit and grime to keep them from clogging up your drippers, but I couldn't find any that was half inch to half inch. So instead, I just need to make sure I can reach them. So if gunk gets pumped up, which it inevitably will, into those tiny, tiny little holes in the emitters that I can reach up there and fix that. Uh, and then some clamps to close the tubing off. I'm also going to be running lines around to the plants, ones that need to be watered more frequently, because by doing that, I can just turn this valve, make sure that one's open, and water everything it's going to be fantastic and then when i'm not using the dripper obviously i just turn this valve so the water's going straight through this line that line's always gonna be open for circulation and then i'll have the hose on it for when it's time to water Whew. it was one thing to do it a whole nother thing to say it and i don't i don't know why i bought this i have the receipt i'm gonna be taking that back i don't i have no what was i don't know what that was for so yeah that's the plan this is probably so exciting so it's to get even more exciting when I go ahead and put it together. Which isn't going to happen right now because I forgot to buy the tubing. <laughs> Whoops. The video, I'll edit it and make it work. I'll give this a shot tomorrow, which will be like a few seconds for all y'all. Oh, but real quick, tomorrow's Saturday, so if something better comes up, then that something else is going to be happening. Just just a heads up. We'll see. I guess, guess we'll all find out together, won't we? Happy Halloween. What's that, Bunkin? What's that? Who's that? You don't care. Over here tossing together a quick candy salad. I think that there should be more than enough candy here for everybody. Now, all the different, the Snickers, the just, some of these tiny Snickers are just, they just have one letter on them. Don't know what that's about. Little Twix, little baby Kit Kats. 
these cute little tiny Twizzler packages. Yell Twizzler, Red Vine people. Let me know. It doesn't actually matter. You don't. You don't have to let me know. It does. It doesn't matter. M Ms with the peanuts, and then there's just these fun size. Oh, these are peanut butter M Ms. Are they not regular M Ms? Just the weird ones. Okay, that's fine. Whoppers, love them or hate them. I'm actually not really huge on candy, period, but there's something fun and festive, and I like the way it smells. I don't really want to eat it, though. Look at these Jolly Ranchers. Aren't these weird? They're, like, long. I thought this was some type of taffy, but no, they're just super long and thin Jolly Ranchers. What the heck's that all about? Why they gotta go changing things? Yeah, see how on the little, these teeny, tiny little party size Snickers ones, they just have a single letter on each one? I feel like that takes some of the fun out of it, doesn't it? Is the goal to collect enough so you can spell out Snickers or something else? Oh, do they have the letters to spell out anything fun? Let's see. Eh, no, there's no D in Snickers. Pick these up, take them out. Not setting it out front. You know that everybody, like a few kids, will just take all of it. Bring this over here, set it on the hall. Hello, how's everybody doing? Candy, ready to go. I just have to light all the jack-o'-lanterns. A lot of pumpkin carving happened last night, didn't it, Pumpkin? She's still not enthused. Here's my pumpkin. So it's got all kinds of fun, steamy, weird, creepy, foggy stuff coming out of its mouth. It was a really good idea, but I have to find somewhere to plug this in outside now, so... That part of it, maybe not the best. Also, I've said, pumpkin carving, not my thing. See where I started? I was like, I'm gonna do a traditional jack o lantern mouth, and then this is where I said, screw it, I want to be done with this. I still think it's cute, it's fine. It does the trick. It'll be brought in the trash in a few days, who cares? Should put some of the Halloween things out where people can actually see them. Okay, boom, festive! Punky, you wanna put your costume on? You put your costume on? I'm just kidding, no costume. I actually did get her a costume because it was on clearance, but I don't, I know she's not gonna wanna wear it, so I'm not gonna put her through that. But, maybe I'll take some pictures, we will see. You're gonna be a skunk, weren't you? Hey, kiss? No kisses? Oh, thanks, Plugian. Yeah, good girl. All right. Time to do the Halloween things. Oh, I was going to roast these pumpkin seeds. Man, these things, this is a chore, getting all the guts out of them. I've got it off of most of them. I, like, rinsed them and dried them and rinsed them and dried them. Just the whole process, getting all those nasty chunks out. Yeah, every time I think I'm done, I go through and I still see some little specks of gunk. On some of them, which isn't the end of the world. I mean, it's edible, but it just, I mean, it kind of looks sort of gross. I'd rather they be nice and clean. But see, so yeah, what do I do here? So I'm put them in a bowl with some olive oil, some salt, maybe some garlic powder, and just uh, roast them. Yeah? I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's how it's done. I think that's how I've always done it. I can't remember. There's no recipe. I just sort of do it. Does that make sense? Y'all have food like that that you make? Another gloomy fall day. Oh, I almost forgot about these guys. I mean, I would have noticed them before I got in the car, but wouldn't want to drive over my kale. There we go, that's better. If you remember, last week, last week's vlog, that is, I put up, put up, planted all these kale out here, and uh, the lack of symmetry was driving me crazy, so I picked up just a few more. It's not going to be enough to fill in this entire area, but I'll just, you know, maybe just do this part right here, something like that. They were in clearance, so I thought, why not? Just grab a couple more of those six packs. Got the... Oh, um, excuse you. I always forget. The car, it has a starter, but when I use the starter, it, uh, you have to use a special thing to unlock it. What a fun story, right? Okay, it is way, way, way too chilly for me to roll the windows down, and the fumes in here are still really intense. I'm referring to the fumes from when I detailed the car last week, the leather cleaner, oh my gosh, it is so potent. So yeah, it's uh, too chilly to roll the windows down, so I guess I'm just gonna suck it up and live with it. I'll probably crack them a little bit because honestly, like this could make me nauseous. I'll survive, it's fine. It sucks that it's raining because I've been wanting to do a video so like I could show the fall because it's peaking, but can't really do that with the windshield wipers going constantly. Go ahead and turn that four-wheel drive on. Things are kind of slippery. Ah, so where did I leave off? I guess I was roasting the pumpkin seeds. I went ahead, put some olive oil on them, some black truffle salt, and seasoned them up, and they came out pretty good. I liked them. I thought they were pretty tasty, very 
buttery. I think that's from the truffle salt. It always gives things a very buttery taste. Also, is anybody noticing this? There's there's no stripes on this street. Just everybody's left to their own devices. Figure it out. Don't hit each other. Starbucks. Twice in one week. This one has the menu where you can see them talking to you. It's too much for me. It drives me crazy. That's kind of dramatic. I don't know. It's just, I, I don't think it's necessary. Put way too much thought into it. I think I'm gonna get a dirty chai latte. Maybe iced. I know it's cold, but still kind of want it iced. Oh, I haven't heard this one in a long time. And it's a remix. Oh, nope, nope, nope. That was so overplayed back in the day. No, thank you. Annoying. There we go. Finally got this guy put back up here. I had to take it down when I cleaned the windshield and just kept forgetting to put it back up. I don't think that's quite right though. I feel like that's up too high. Is it up too high? Eh, that works. Not really though. I don't want to see this down here. See my finger? No, that's not going to work. But uh, I don't really think I have time to be too picky with that right now. I don't know, let's see. Well, that kind of works. I'm really, this is probably super boring. I'm so sorry. The camera, when it rains, it like can't decide where to focus and it gets all jiggly. It stopped doing it for a minute. Okay, it kind of did it. For a minute it was doing it like in unison to the music. It was very entertaining. You guys tell I'm bored. I feel like that's probably pretty obvious by now. So, here's what's happening now. I've got my dirty chai, which is just a chai latte with a shot of espresso. And, um, okay, people, where'd everybody come from? And my plan for this week had been to go ahead and get those kale planted and do a few little gardening things, but it just won't stop raining. And I have family in town kind of unexpectedly, and how long they're staying is sort of up in the air. Nobody really knows. If you've been watching the vlogs, you know, I have some family that's been kind of displaced, but they're okay. Their house is okay, too, but I'm from Hurricane Michael. So, uh, I'm doing family things. Wow, this is terrible. You can't see anything. Anyways, my point, wow, this is, I'm going to wait till I get to the parking lot. I'm going to Petco. I'm going to get some fish for the fish tank, and I'll update you then. Um, I don't know what's going on here. This cop was... He pulled out in front of everybody, was going like 30 under the, like he's going like 30 miles an hour and then he just kind of swerved and stopped in traffic, got out of his car and he was like, hold on guys, oh there's another one. Oh, you know what, I think it's a funeral procession. Oh, that's sad. Well, okay, that's not going to record that. Here we are, but you can't see any of this. Anyways. Why does it zoom in on the selfie cam? This drives me crazy. I'm at Petco. Like I was saying, family's in town. Things are complicated right now. They're good, but complicated. And it makes it really hard to vlog. So I'm going to run here into the store, which is backwards, because this automatically mirrors everything. See, that's the reason my face is never on camera. It's not because, like, I don't want to be on camera. It's because my big camera, my nice camera, the screen doesn't flip out, so I can't always tell if something's in focus. And this one, when you hit record, it zooms in so close that you can't get a good wide-angle shot, and it just drives me absolutely crazy. I mean, I know there's more pressing issues in the world, but it's just, it's just, it's a pet peeve, you know? You make technology, make these things so expensive, why do stupid things with them? Why not... Why not have people review these things a little bit better before you release them and charge people hundreds of dollars for them? Yep. There they are. Hey look, fall! Isn't it pretty? It actually, it was really pretty down, down there, but I was driving. I'm at a stoplight now. Too bad these are all Bradford pears, which are invasive and don't belong here, but I mean, hey, they're still pretty. Oh, right. I am home. The fish are floating. These are the Chinese high thin sharks. They're actually a type of loach, I believe. Not I believe, they are. They're a type of loach. They do well in cool water, not like freezing cold water, but they're a good candidate for a fish that would go well with the other things that I have. Just like the giant danios, they can take some cooler water, and they are very prolific. They eat a lot of critters that fall like onto the surface, which I like. That's the whole whole reason I have them. So in the other bag, there's more giant danios. I'm trying to build up a really big squad. I'd like to have about three dozen of them. Uh, right now, there's 16, so 
just about there. And right now I just have them floating, gonna give them about 15 minutes to temperature adjust. I sometimes drip acclimate, sometimes I float the bags, it really depends on the fish. With salt water, especially invertebrates like snails and hermit crabs, crabs in general, just all invertebrates, I pretty much always drip. I'll float them for a few minutes to help them adjust the temperature and then do a drip. But it does depend because if there's a lot of fish in one bag and if they're in the bag for a long time, as soon as you open that and the oxygen gets in there, the ammonia goes up and pH crashes. It's very stressful for the fish. And uh, there's a lot of Danios in that bag. As you can see here, there's about a dozen of them. So I'm not going to drip them. It's not necessary. These are really sturdy and tough fish, so they'll be okay. And same thing with the hyphen loaches. I'm actually, I'm giving them a few minutes to float and then I'm going to put them into the pitcher and slowly add water into there and take a little bit out. I'll put a piece of poly pad in there and that removes some ammonia and so they'll adjust a little bit more slowly because they're a little bit more delicate. I haven't moved the rest of the fish in yet because the forecast changed and it's no hunger fall. I mean, it is. It's chilly and gloomy outside, but we're not getting really severe low temperatures like we were before, so they don't need to be moved in yet. So... Maybe next week, uh, actually probably the week after, I'll be moving everything in. I'm trying to do it fairly gradually, even though this is already cycled and everything. It's still a big change in the bio load, so I want it to be somewhat gradual. So, good thing I spent that first, like, what, 12, 50 minutes of the vlog trying to get all the plumbing together, right? Yeah, well, just the way things go sometimes. Yeah, it was actually 80 degrees the other day. It was very, very nice. Okay, yeah, I'm going to give you guys a little bit longer to float, and I'll release them and talk about some more stuff. Got the Danios here. Gonna go ahead and pour them through this net, which is not gonna show up on camera that well, but I tried my best. There we go. Get them all in there. Kind of get a better look at them there. They're basically a tropical minnow, but I don't like to mix water from the pet store with my fish, so that's why I strain them through the net. Go ahead and let them go. Go on, be free. There you go. Find your friends, make a nice big school of shiny silver fish. There we go, look at that. They're already joining up with the others. Starting to build a nice big school. Uh, these guys over here, they're just about ready to go in. Not quite, maybe another five minutes and they'll be good to go too. I hadn't really mentioned, one of the reasons I'm trying to go ahead and any fish I want to add to this, I'm doing it now before I move the rest in, is, isn't just because I'm trying to move them in gradually, but because I have those sturgeon. And sturgeon are very sensitive to medication, so if something were to show up in here with some type of disease and that were to spread to the sturgeon, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to treat them. Really, salt is about all you can do using some aquarium salt, and uh, that's not always effective for everything. So I like to go ahead and get these guys in several weeks ahead of time so I can keep a close eye on them, watch out for any spots, discolorations, growths, whatnot, make sure there's nothing contagious in here, because if that becomes the case, then I can go ahead, pull them out, and treat them, and whatnot. Now, ideally, I would have a quarantine set up, but uh, I don't really have the space or the time for that. This just has to work. All right, I'm going to go ahead and let these guys go. I'm going to try and get them up with my hands instead of a net. It's just a little bit more gentle, and I don't really think I'm going to hold them out long enough for you to get much of a good look at them, other than like right there. There you go. That's it. And then letting them go. There you go, bud. And one more. I was hoping to get about three to five of these guys, but this is all they had, just the two of them, but they really do a lot better in a group. Are you going to be all right? You shocked yourself a little bit? All right, he's okay. Yeah, they're probably going to end up settling down underneath this piece of driftwood, and they should be just fine. And I did want to mention really quick that these hyphen loaches, the Chinese hyphen sharks is what they call them, they're loaches, these get very, very big. They're not really for a fish tank. If I didn't have this pond set up here, I wouldn't have them. And uh, they're going to need something bigger than this eventually. And I have to build something bigger than this next year or the year after because of the sturgeon. So that's the only reason that I'm okay with having them. Otherwise, not for a fish tank. They're going to need a minimum 1,000 gallons probably as they're full grown. Even more than that because they don't really like to be alone. And then for the fish tank, you're going to focus? Probably not. Just grab some red and blue Colombian Tetris, which, blurry, sorry about that, don't know what that's all about, just need to adjust my settings. And the tank's a little bit cloudy because I just stirred the gravel last night. Most of the things have settled, but I didn't want to do a gravel vac because I had just done a gravel vac and I was trying to keep it stirred up. 
This tank was, well, it was originally, no, this was originally salt water, and then it was fresh water, and then it was salt water, and then it was a discus tank, and then I went back to salt water. It's been all over the place. I transitioned it back to fresh water last winter. But the way it's set up is it has this corner flow on it, which all comes down here through the sump, this refugium, and there's a lot of filtration down there. I have filter socks, all kinds of stuff going on down there. But this diameter of the holes that are drilled, let me show you. Up here, the diameter of those holes isn't big enough for a ton of flow. I like about 10 times an hour minimum. That really does depend on the efficiency of the filtration, which is as far as water flow goes. I like for there to be a lot of it. So it's only running about, it's rated for 600 gallons an hour. I think I have it pushing 950 and it's okay so far, but I also have an emperor on the back change the bags on that as often as I can, like pretty often. I at least rinse them once a week, gravel vac, do my water changes weekly and all that stuff. And I had to put in circulation pumps, keep that water moving. But basically this is a very, very, very tall tank. So sometimes getting the flow moving across the bottom is a little bit more difficult. So if I'm between gravel vacs, I'll come in and I'll stir a little bit. Yes, the tank is very crowded right now. And that's because of these Danios and the rainbows that were actually outside during the summer. They spawned, they multiplied. So need to get rid of those or give them away, that is. Because I would prefer this actually be more of just a planted tank with a lot of tiny small fish. Don't know why I said it like it was a question. That's not a question. This was once planted up very heavily and the LED that's on here broke the light fixture. Obnoxious, but it was also 12 years old and it was an off-brand led fixture so i'm happy it held up as long as it did I just recently got a new one so the plants are finally starting to kind of bounce back the tanks coming back to life which i'm very 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 happy about but yeah red and blue columbian tetras not come on guys focus for me come on please 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 anyways they'll color up they get a bluish hint to their body red fins and uh, there are six of them in here. I'd like to get more, but they're not that easy to come by for some reason. Not as easy as they used to be. I know there's algae on the background. I had painted it blue, probably should have painted it black. I like to leave some kind of biofilm in there because these guys down here, the Crebenzi cichlids, they're a dwarf cichlid that can be territorial. It kind of depends on your tank setup, but they're territorial right now because they're just spawning. So they're a little bit more aggressive than normal, but uh. The babies, the fry, baby fish, there's like essential biofilms that build up all kinds of flora and fauna that we can't really see along that back wall. And the babies chew on it. They eat it. It helps them grow. Same thing with the driftwood. So I don't really clean the algae off the back of my tank. I don't get a ton on the front of the tank either. There's some old stuff up here from when the light broke and the lighting was off that I need to actually get off with a razor blade. Yeah, the algae isn't usually too much of a problem in here, especially now that the plants are going to start going again. That's going to help eat up a lot of the excess nutrient and hopefully... Ideally, when things are balanced, there isn't much excess nutrient, so it's all about finding a balance. So that's that's what's going on with this tank. I did just throw some bloodworms in there. I did the same thing for the fish out in the garage, too. Hey, bud, what you doing? Oh, okay, hi. You guys gonna vote? Get out there and do it. Don't be lazy. Go do it. Let's say my county actually sent out the wrong sample ballot, so... Just now getting this one so I can review the issues. I've reviewed them online. I like to make sure I know everything that's going on before I go in to vote, so I'm happy they finally sent this. Always good to be an informed voter. That is important. But yeah, like they said, if you're able to, hi, Blinken. Don't be lazy. Get out there and vote. There's no reason not to. Yet another vlog that's been all over the place. Next week, though, gonna start moving some plants in, digging some things up, getting them potted, assuming the weather behaves and things dry out the way that they're supposed to. That's the plan anyways. But this is where I have to say goodbye because i got to wrap this up, get it edited and all that fun stuff. And family's coming over, going to make some dinner and have fun. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up if you liked it. I appreciate it. Makes a big difference for the channel and for the videos. It means the world to me, so thank you. And subscribe as well. Upload multiple times a week. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. All my social media is linked down below in the description. Feel free to follow me. I'll follow you back. I have a lot of fun looking at people's pictures. I am on Instagram more than anything else. Right. As always, everybody, most importantly, keep on growing. Bye-bye.